We are It's Just a Hill, a cycling club that promotes inclusion, judgment-free with no gatekeepers. Focused on creating content from behind the handlebars to in the studio, It's Just a Hill is producing videos and podcasts to spread the message that cycling is for everyone. We are focused on reminding everyone that riding your bike can help you overcome any obstacle. Because after all, it's just a hill. Hello and welcome to another episode of the It's Just a Hill Cycling Podcast. I am John Stenning and in just a bit, I'll be joined by an old friend of mine, Mark Barone. Not old in the sense of the fact that he's like old, because Mark and I are the same age and I do not consider myself old. Age is nothing but a number. Uh, don't get me started on that, but old in the sense, why do I go off script? I don't know. I don't know why I do it. I, I've write, I write these things down in front of me. I go off script and I make stupid jokes and then I question my existence. Uh, Mark is old in the sense that I've known Mark since high school. Uh, I was a new kid at a so, uh, as a sophomore at a big, pretty big like public high school, a school with like 2,000 kids. And uh, Mark was very welcoming and we had a history class together. We did group projects together. So shout out to Mark for being a great guy. Mark is a through hiker. He's accomplished quite a bit. He's done all these big uh, like backpacking trips. And uh, we talk about that a little bit. We talk about bike packing a little bit. So yeah, uh, stay tuned for that. Before we get to that, I would like to uh, remind everyone about Cranksgiving, which is our annual Cranksgiving ride with the Coffee Yes Cycling Maybe folks. That's going to be on Sunday, November 19th, rolling from We Roast coffee in Lincoln, Rhode Island. Make sure you head to our Strava page or the CYCM Strava page to join the events and get more details. Before that, on this Sunday, October 22nd, the Tri-State Cycling Club is hosting a coat drive at Roger Williams Park at 9 a.m. You can head to their Strava Club page for more details. The links to both events, this uh, the Tri-State Cycling Clubs and Cranksgiving will be in the description below the YouTube video. So if you're just listening to this episode, we suggest you watch it on YouTube. You get to see me fly on my hands around, like I've said in the past. And uh, yeah, you get the, the you didn't really get the good stuff in the links at the bottom. Uh, also, keep an eye out for our new kits. They'll be launching via our Pactimo Club kit store in just a little bit. As of this recording, the kit uh, the kit store is just a couple days away. So maybe by the time you're listening or watching this, uh, it's already open. You could head to our website. Uh, it's just a hill.com for more details. It'll be right at the top of the page uh, of our homepage when it is open. And uh, like I said, those links will also be below. Here's my interview with Mark. Hello and welcome to the podcast, Mark Barone. Hi, Mark. How are you? Hi, good. Thank you for having me. It's always nice to do. Oh, thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. You're welcome for having you. And I like I like doing fake pleasantries on the podcast, even though we already just spoke. But <laughs> uh, it's been quite some time since you and I have seen each other. It um, has. I sort of explained in the intro of the show that, like, you know, uh, you and I have been friends for quite some time, over half of our lives, I think, at this point. That is um, wild to think, yeah. And uh, you are not necessarily a cycling-centric person, but you are someone that likes to uh, take adventures, is what I'd like to say. Yeah, um, that's a good good way to describe So through hiking, uh, backpacking, uh, you just completed the CDT or the Continental Divide Trail. Is that, is that correct? That's correct. And can you tell us a little bit about the CDT? I sort of explained in the intro that it starts right in Mexico at the, the U.S. border of Chihuahua, and it goes up through the up to the Canadian border in Alberta. Is that right? That's correct. And uh, how many how many miles is that? So it is that's always kind of a difficult question to answer because so the official trail, yep. um, the whole philosophy behind the trail is that it follows the actual continental divide continental. so yeah. the the trail tries to remain i forget the exact amount within 25 miles of the divide itself okay if cool. you are to take that trail that follows the divide the whole yep. thing is about three thousand miles yeah gotcha. um but it's it's a few different things but it's one it's not totally finished so some of those trails are just road walks Yep. There's also a lot of very common alternates that people take. And a okay. lot of the alternates are not on the divide itself, so it can be shorter. My personal journey on the divide was a little over 2,300 miles. 2,300 miles. Wow. And, 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 and over 150 days, right? 154 or something like that? Uh, I think that right? it's 140. Oh, under 150. Yeah, 142. 
142 days, 2,300 miles. And this is not the first time you have uh, accomplished a feat like this. Is that correct? That's correct. I hiked the Pacific Crest Trail yep. um, in 2021. So that one's very cool. Same, same yep. thing, Mexico to Canada, but it goes through, it's like the Western coast. So it's like yep. through California, Oregon, and Washington. And how close were you to the coast on that one? Like, would not you get pretty close. close? No, not very no, close. Not no. close. So it's like a, kind no. of the eastern side of California. A gotcha. lot of people call it gotcha. the Pacific Coast Trail uh, uh-huh. incorrectly, but it's Pacific Crest Pacific Trail. Pacific Crest Trail. Yeah. And is that similar to the Continental Divide where that's some sort of where tectonic plates? Cook? Like, is it uh, something like that? Or is it just a, is it just a term? It's just a term. Yeah. you're. Gotcha. I think the idea is you're going through the crest of the mountains because okay. it's a whole different trail design philosophy on that one yeah. uh I, I think it's just go through the most beautiful areas from mexico gotcha. to canada through cool. those mountain ranges but yeah cool um and are those the two longest ones have you done the appalachian trail i have not i've the only other through hike i've it. done yeah. is the the long trail which does share about 100 miles with the at yeah. but that's just uh vermont gotcha very cool. And how many days out of this trip? Not too long. You finished not too long ago. A week ago. Yeah. A week ago. Yeah. And do you feel like a normal member of society back to normal? You have shaved your beard. Your beard got pretty serious over the course That's of correct. 140 plus days. But <laughs> look at you now. No beard, button up shirt. Yeah. Um, are you Are you currently working? Uh, no. I hope to be working uh, maybe about two weeks from now. Yep. Um, but no, so I'm not a contributing member to society, but I do feel oh, like okay. I've, <laughs> I've kind of adjusted pretty well, at least compared to the last long hike I've done. Uh, adjusted pretty well, like coming back, like being off trail and uh, living under a roof. And correct. Yeah. Being around society and <laughs> going to the grocery store. Um, That's right. But you're, and so um, like I, I just got off of a much shorter trip, but in a similar you know, fashion of just sort of like being out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Right. And so how, um, how isolated did you get on this trip? Like, were you, how far were you in between towns and, and, uh, you know, not only how far were you in between towns, but like how out there did it really feel, you know, in some of these remote areas of the United States? It, it's, it, that's also interesting because I think like from a pure technical perspective, I was in some pretty remote areas. So like yeah. it would be, I don't know. I, I'm just going to throw this number out there, but like 30 miles from the nearest road in any direction. Yeah. Right. Wow. So that, I think that sounds remote because like, when you think about that, it's like, well, I couldn't get to a road if I wanted to right now, if something happened, but also like there's something about through hiking that has really made, I don't know, the outdoors a lot smaller for me. It's right. like when you're leaving town that whole day, you're walking into the woods and it's like, well, I just left town. And then you'll always see dirt roads or there are, you might get cell service. I always felt like there were some signs of life, even though this is known to be quite a remote trail. There were very few sections where I felt like, whoa, I'm in the middle of nowhere. I would say the yeah. two sections that I felt like that were uh, the New Mexico desert where okay. you, you would actually see nothing and you can see so far because, because it's, it's flat, flat and it's yeah 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 yep. um so that was kind of wild and then there's the bob marshall wilderness which is in montana yep. um just a very remote like very dense forest and it's like right there's nothing here uh, which is now, kind of a cool feeling i think yeah one of the cool things about what you do i think is you sort of are documenting it on instagram as you're hiking and uh, you can sort of live vicariously through you i remember you posting uh videos when you were what was it bob hardman is that what it is uh bob marshall oh okay bob marshall not as cool <laughs> yeah. sounding as bob hardman <laughs> yeah. um so bob marshall and i remember you you made uh, you made a comment on you know one of your instagram stories about how you might not be the biggest uh like wilderness hiker maybe that's mm. the sort of term that you used um, but this seemed like a, a sort of very beautiful place. Uh, so can yeah. you tell me a little bit about like the type of hiking that you enjoy to do and the things that like aren't necessarily as appealing to you? I mean, you see a lot of shit fucking going from Mexico <laughs> to Canada, right? Like, yeah. yeah. Um, so I think there's like a lot of people out there who, and, and a lot of people make the assumption about me that like, I love just being out in nature and I do, mm-hmm. but it's like, I get pretty bored on a walk in the woods, despite, you know, doing it a lot. So like what I tend to enjoy is like climbing peaks, 
and walking on ridges and then like huge open expanses and like where yeah. i can see a lot like i think that's that to me is what excites me about hiking and i hike to get to places like that um i think that was what made bob marshall pretty unique is that like it was just walking through the woods but it was a different experience than normal so that was exciting to me yeah did you hike with any other people i know you have like friends that do this and you sort of meet up we, we've sort of discussed after you did the pct we we sat down and we talked about it a little bit and i was like so interested in this so did you have companions over the over the course of this trip yeah so this this one especially i started with uh people i had known which was different than most people do um it's yeah. kind of tough to get anybody you know or any friends to quit their job and hike for yes yeah. <laughs> yeah, some I understand. Some miles. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, <laughs> you're not gonna like ask your mom, "Do you want to come with me?" Right. Um, I would love that. It's just like it, people have responsibilities. So, right. but I, I did. I was fortunate enough to meet a really good group of people on the Pacific Crest Trail a couple of years ago, and they're all a bunch of people who are willing to quit their jobs and who are willing to go for long, long hikes. So, uh, we started with, I think there was five other people that I cool. started with and, you know, stuck with them. Stuck with them the whole time? The whole much. time. So some of them had to leave yep. uh, for various reasons. And but we did meet uh, a few others who, who joined yep. up. So it was kind of a rotating uh, group of people that I was with. And now do you sort of go about and like, do you go about your day on a day to day basis, even though you're doing it with these like four or five other people, people are coming and going, are you spending the entire day with them? Or is this more like, Hey, we're going to meet in town and are you going to do things at your own pace? Or how does that, how does that yeah, all pan out? Good question. One thing I actually do not like when we talk about like, what do I enjoy hiking? I do not like hiking with people. Um, yep. So uh, generally we would kind of say, Hey, there's a river in 15 miles. Why don't we meet there for lunch? And then yep. just everybody go at your own pace. And when you get there, you get there, hang out for lunch. When you're done eating, you just pack up and go. You don't wait for people. I mean, sometimes we'll hike and we'll chat for a little bit, but uh, yeah. for the most part, um, while actually hiking, for the most part, I would say 95% of the time I was just alone. So if you're meeting someone, if you're meeting a group of people in a river, and 15 miles for lunch what are you what are you eating for lunch is that something that's in your pack right because this isn't a river that has a, a general store <laughs> yeah. or a deli at it right this is a, a, a an isolated river or yeah. you know a, a vista or whatever that you're meeting to eat lunch and so that's something that you picked up in the previous town or something yeah, like that so I, you know generally through hiking is essentially a series of backpacking trips right so i would say yep. the the trips range from three to seven days seven would be quite long i'm not sure if i did any seven day segments but um so yeah we would go to the grocery store fill up our backpacks and the name of the game is generally calorie per weight ratio and almost nothing else matters uh okay. so i would eat a lot of ramen noodles so like i would say my typical lunch would be uh like ramen and like one of those chicken packets like they're like tuna packets is more common but I oh, okay yeah Yep. Um, and then at dinner, I would usually have couscous and avocado. Um, and then I just have a whole bunch of like protein bars for in between. And this, uh, the ramen, the couscous, so you're bringing water with you. You're bringing a little mini boiler or some sort, whatever you call it. Yeah, right? we, uh, most of us use a, uh, some, like a filter that kind of screws onto the top of a bottle. And yep. It's like squeezing water. So um, I use a Sawyer squeeze is what it's called. Okay. Uh, so you'd fill up in the rivers or whatever. Sometimes you're drinking out of, uh, you're sharing water with cows. So yep. wherever the cows are drinking out of, there are little things and it's all algae and disgusting, but you filter it out. And, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So nice. yeah, that, that's one thing is like when you start to think about like water out there, it's like you really need to trust your filter. And then once yeah. you trust your filter, it's like water anywhere is good. Even if it tastes gross, it's like you get pretty grateful for it. Because especially when you start thinking about like the New Mexico water sources, yeah. um, you would like before through hiking, I would look at that and be like, holy crap, anybody who touches that is going to die. Yeah, and yeah. now I'm like, oh, hell yeah. Yeah, give me yeah, some. Right. So, yeah, right. Right. Do you go through multiple filters or is that like one filter that sort of lasts through your hole? Like how does how does that work? Uh, technically they could last. I forget what the real number is, but they could last. It's like 10,000 gallons or something gotcha. absurd, but they yeah. really start to slow down 
um and it, you have to squeeze a lot harder and yeah. it takes longer they get so built up yeah yeah and if they ever become frozen they actually they're ruined so oh, okay. i lost i lost one due to it freezing and uh i bought one other one so i went through three uh, but by the end i was like i really wish i hadn't bought another one uh so freezing how cold did it get while you were out there uh for i the mean most obviously part, yeah freezing <laughs> at most 32 <laughs> degrees oh uh, yeah no um <laughs> Generally, I would say, like, uh, like through Colorado when we were really high in elevation, the average night was, I don't know, high twenties probably yeah. be the average night. Um, definitely had some nights that were probably in the teens. Mm -hmm. Um, but overall, it was actually temperature wise fairly mild. I, I thought. I think I was colder on other trails, like. PCT specifically, but yeah. I, I think it also helped that, you know, we started in almost May in New Mexico. And then by the time it got to September, that's like we were in a cold area, but it still wasn't that late in the year. So it still was yeah. kind of like summer. So I think we timed it okay. Colorado is definitely where it got the coldest. And it was like very snowy, very snowy year in Colorado. So and are you are you uh, setting up a tent every night? Are you sleeping under the stars? Is it a bivy situation? What is what is that like? If I could, I would always uh, sleep under the stars. We call it cowboy yeah. camping. Um, definitely my preference, but that became very ta challenging to do after we left. I don't actually even in northern New Mexico. Like I thought I was going to cowboy every single night. Yeah, which uh, was kind of disappointing when I couldn't because it was just for various reasons. One, it was raining a lot, so you gotcha. didn't want to get caught uh, in the rain. Uh, bugs is another reason. And then, I guess, for Colorado, it was mostly because of the cold, I would guess. But, uh, yeah. So, after I left New Mexico, it was really tent every night. But, so, uh, yeah. and a lot oh, of hotels ahead. as well. I don't like to give people the wrong idea. People also think that I go out in the woods and I just walk. Um, right. I did spend a fair amount of time in town as well. Yeah. I mean, and that seems important too, right? Yeah. It's for me, it's about half the adventure is just going right. to new towns. And then, you know, you guess like you asked about food, it's a free pass to eat whatever you want. So I love Absolutely. going to restaurants yep. and just getting the largest hamburger they have. So, yeah. That's yeah. You seem to, you seem to try to seek out hamburgers. Is that, was that a correct <laughs> assumption, right? Well, yeah. On the Pacific Crest Trail, I was doing a thing where I was, ranking all of the burgers on trail yeah so okay even, but you also did something number. else burger -wise yeah, we can talk that. about that yeah yeah okay so you ranked the burgers and do you remember from the pct do you remember something that like really stood out to you burger wise uh yes so my my top two burgers okay. whenever people ask the best one of them is a little bit unfair to give people so one thing i learned was that it's it was less about the burger and more about kind of just my feelings or attitude at the time. I think that's what I learned about. Because like, I think a burger is kind of always good. So the range of which they can get good sure. is right. like, you know, it's kind of a, a narrow whatever. So like yeah. sometimes McDonald's is my favorite burger. It's the best Absolutely. tasting thing. Yep. So I, I do think like legitimately the best tasting burger on trail was this place called Yaks. Yaks on five. Okay. I think it's called. It's in Dunsmere, California. Yeah. Um, if you ever have a chance to go there, uh, it's freaking delicious. <laughs> yeah. But you think it uh, might have to do with like the mood that you're in that day, the the meal, like the, reward, exactly. the calorie rewardingness. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So like that yeah. place in particular, uh, there was people there who like paid for our meal. The owner came oh, wow. out, gave us free cinnamon rolls. They just wow. made it a really nice experience for us there just because we're hiking and people like to do nice stuff for you. So yeah. like, A, it was just like a really cool place and – I was having a fun time. So I think that definitely added to it. Uh, my favorite burger on that trail, which I know, I don't know if this is what you wanted to talk about, but this is what you got me going on. So that's I would love to about. talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will. Um, so one of the nights in the middle of the, one of the more remote sections of the Pacific Crest Trail. Uh, so it was in the desert. Very, very difficult day. For the most part, the desert on the PCT is not the desert that you picture. It's got a lot of, it's a lot more green than you would expect. But mm -hmm. this section, uh, really was like you'd look out and it's a desert expanse there was like dunes it was all sand uh, so just very hot challenging day and then when we got to camp coming down a hill we saw a van parked 
on this dirt road. And I was really thinking at the time, wow, I, would, I, I just hope there's someone in there with like a cooler. Like, I just yeah. really like, I just want some, I want a soda right now. Yeah. And I could stare down this hill, I could see it for like an hour coming down. And I was like, really building it up in my head, like, oh, this person's got soda for me, which is a dumb thing to do because it could just be a van parked in the middle of nowhere. Sure. Right. Right. Uh, get to the end. And sure enough, from behind it, out walks somebody holding a can of Coke. And I was like, yes. Wow. Anyway, turns out uh, it was a dude who's, he hiked the Appalachian Trail and he was out there doing trail magic. And he said, hey, help yourself to anything in the cooler. We got beer, sodas, water and cold water, which was very cool. And so obviously I helped myself to a, a soda because that's like all I could think about. And he's like, if you stick around, we're going to make uh, some tacos. And I was like, OK, sounds great. Yeah. And he, he whipped us up the best tacos i've ever had and i'm not just wow. saying that like literally the best tacos i ever had and he's doing this out of a van and they were like fancy like he had like little like chopped up mushrooms with like teriyaki in there some like cabbage it was like all fresh stuff and yeah. then he was like yeah if you stick around tonight i think we're gonna do some burgers and i was like wow i think i'm gonna be sticking around tonight <laughs> <laughs> so i kept drinking sodas and some beers and I was just hanging out and a whole big group of hikers started to like congregate there. Mm -hmm. He made us all handmade burgers. Like it was just like the, the big, the beef and he like rolled out the patties, seasoned wow. them. He had avocado, lettuce, tomato, onion, all fresh brioche bun. This is just out of a van in the middle of the desert. Right. Um, that was the best burger that I had on trail. Like, and it's not it sounds amazing. Fun. Yeah. Yes. That sounds amazing. Now, was it good because I had a hard day in the desert? Or was it good because it was actually that good? I don't know. Perspective is said, reality, though. You know, like that's <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah, it really then, is. Yeah. Then he said, "If you stick around, we're gonna watch a movie." I was like, "Wow, okay." So, like, obviously, we're camping here. He puts a movie on, and he's like, "You guys want popcorn?" Wow. Hell yeah, I do. And then he said, "How about root beer floats?" He just kept coming out with stuff. Holy cow! It was like every time I was like, "He's not like he's just joking about that, isn't he?" Right. And right. then in the morning he made his omelets and coffee and yeah, it was amazing. It was like truly one of the more special days, which is not what we, cause we were talking about the CDT that did not happen on the CDT. Right, 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 right. <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, anyway, that was my favorite burger. Now you talked, you sort of mentioned this term trail magic, which I think, um, yeah. you know, something that a lot of people probably haven't heard of. I think mm -hmm. you just described a, a moment of trail magic, right? But could you sort For of, sure. uh, Right. Is that just sort of uh, like everything sort of coming together at the at the right moment, at the right time, and you're experiencing these things with other people? How would you sum up trail magic for someone that's never you know, been on trail? Yeah. Trail magic uh, definition for me would be an unexpected act of kindness from a stranger, I guess would be maybe. Beautiful. The, yeah. Um, so what I described is like, not normal trail magic although it was incredible um usually what you'll see is like there'll be a cooler um yeah. just on trail that like somebody who knows that it, the cdt is there comes through, leave yeah. a cooler with like some gatorades and maybe some you know protein bars or whatever um and then even that is like amazing when you come across a cooler and there's like yeah. a sprite in there it's it's the best tasting sprite ever um sometimes it'll just be like uh somebody giving you a ride into town um usually it's food related though i would say right <laughs> that's interesting because like that sort of same thing will happen to me on a bike packing trip but we don't necessarily have a term for it but there is yeah. a very there's a feeling to it there really Definitely. is a feeling and it is a huge morale booster it's a huge mm -hmm. mood booster right like on this recent trip we camped out at an orchard yep. and uh we didn't know much about the orchard we saw it on a map we called them like hey we're riding our bikes through. We're going to stop and get food anyway. Like, you know, some 16 year old girl answered the phone. She's like, I'm going to have to like talk to Al or whatever, you know? <laughs> and like two hours later we were there and not only did they let us camp there, but it turned out to be this, like the best orchard we've ever been to. Oh, that's awesome. It had a general store and a market with like apple dumplings. And oh, there was like a pizza shed and a talking. beef barn in the back. And people were playing bingo in the beef barn. And there was like loud music. And I love that. it was like a party in the middle of nowhere, you know, yes. like, 
I mean, and sure, it's still, this is Massachusetts middle of nowhere, which is still yep. a relatively built up area. Towns are pretty close together, but, you know, around the Quabbin Reservoir where there just isn't much and yep. you don't expect it. You expect a, you know, a small orchard or a farm stand or something, but it's, it's, it's that experience mixed with like people's people being uh, gracious like with their time or with their kindness and it is like it it's truly always is so like amazing funny to me because i'm out here doing i'm out here living my dream i'm on vacation right. i'm having right. this awesome time and like yeah it's this big challenging thing but like this is a decision i made to do and i'm loving it right not always loving it but for the yeah, most there part. are highs and there are lows yeah sure yeah and then to on top of that, like be rewarded and have people out there who are saying like, Hey, this is amazing that you're doing this. Good for you. Right. Here, here, take this or like any right. sort of kindness. I always like, I'm like, Oh my God, like I'm right. already doing this great thing. And then you're only adding to it. I just think that's so, so cool. And so nice. And it, it really yeah. makes me want to give back. And then just like this orchard experience thing you're describing, like that to me is that's why through hiking for me or any sort of adventuring is that's why you do it because hundred percent you would never ever go to that orchard in any other circumstance and it's just like seeing what's out there meeting people um that's that's really what it's all about yeah because like the physical the pushing yourself physically is Mm -hmm. rewarding but it's very like self-rewarding but sharing it with other people experiencing things finding general stores or vistas or coolers with sprites in them is really like it is it's magical i mean trail magic is a great word for it and i i don't know i just like love that i love that term a lot and i think it's for sure yeah um all right let's talk about food a little bit more uh just a little bit more and then i want to talk to you about some gear stuff but we sort of i sort of alluded to it earlier and I, I would like to ask you about some food stuff on the CDT, but when you did the PCT, you did this burger thing. Uh, okay. What did yeah. you do? <laughs> okay. So um, I did what I call the Mark Donald's challenge. The Mark Donald's challenge. Yes. Yeah. So it, on the <laughs> PCT, uh, basically right off trail, it's like less than a half a mile from the trail. There is a McDonald's. Um, so obviously everybody goes there and usually loiters all day, gets lunch right. and then hikes on. Um, I had this idea to, I didn't come up with the idea of packing out McDonald's for a section, sure. but I had heard about it and I really wanted to do it, but I wanted to do it a little bit more fun. So it was 20, I, forget, I think 27 miles to the next town from that McDonald's. So I bought 27 cheeseburgers and the challenge was to eat one for every mile to the next town. Yeah. Uh, and I ended up, I, I did it, but I, <laughs> I I gave up on the idea of eating one. I was going to like hike a mile, eat one, hike a mile, eat one. Yeah. I don't know if that is possible. I just kind of ate them as I went when I felt hungry enough to right. eat them. You broke up the 27 between 27 miles, but not necessarily every mile marker. Correct. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was also over an evening so i had to so there was a sleep in there which i which i think helped but uh, sure yeah (laughs) yeah that was a quote-unquote fun thing i did and you were excited about doing it right i definitely was yeah and a little thing about you you used to work at mcdonald's i love mcdonald's yes and i love I love i love that some people i'm sure there are plenty of people out there that worked at mcdonald's and fucking hate it now right (laughs) yeah no there has to be but yeah. you enjoy it. And I, I like McDonald's too. I don't think yes. there's anything wrong with McDonald's, especially like you said, you're burning so many calories. you got to put the calories back in. Yep. There's something comforting about a chain restaurant or fast food. I think like, For because sure. it's the same everywhere, right? Like you can yep. get the same type of meal at the McDonald's that you worked at in Coventry as you can at this like McDonald's in California somewhere. Right. A thousand percent. Yep. I I love it. And uh, even on the CDT, I would always say the McDonald's is my North star. So there there was one in almost every town and that's what I was going. That's what kept me going to the next town. (laughs) What is your, what's your go-to at McDonald's? Is it the cheeseburger? Is this this a single cheeseburger? I did single cheeseburgers because I was worried double cheeseburgers would have been too much. Yeah. I think if I were to redo it, I would have done double cheeseburgers instead because the ratio of bun to burger sure. was brutal. Yeah. And it, what that challenge became was just the bread eating challenge. Like, right. 
anyway um when i go like if i'm gonna when i normally go i just get a quarter pounder meal gotcha yeah um, when i go on hiking it's a quarter pounder meal plus a uh 10 piece nugget plus a McFlurry generally. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Nice. I love that. Um, now let's talk about food on the CDT. Do you do, was there a certain meal, whether it's trail magic included or not, was there a certain meal or even burger that like really stood out to you from that trip? Interesting. Um, I guess as far as standing out, not so much. Uh, there was a great burger place in, uh, steamboat springs colorado yep which was a place we all had low expectations for because we had just heard it wasn't a great spot but it was it was awesome and, and the owner there um like it was just more trail magic so he just gave us like 10 scoops of ice cream in a pile he's like this isn't on the menu but here and he just like wow. plopped the most ice cream ever seen in front of us um so that was cool um and a really great burger and then he had this like can i take a selfie with you guys it's just like a really great spot i yeah. wish i could remember the name um yeah. but uh yeah if anybody's going to colorado i'll have them reach out to me and i'll uh <laughs> is there a certain like a certain meal or a certain food that will bring you out of a slump is it like a burger like say you're having a bad day right because there are obviously highs and lows while you're out there yeah um is it is it something as simple as a soda or a burger does it not necessarily matter to bring you out of slump what what do you think of yeah, when it comes to that I think any cold beverage would bring me out of a slump for gotcha. sure or yeah. a hot beverage if it's like cold and rainy. But yeah. what, what I kind of, my, uh, feel good food, I, I think the more I was feeling bad, the more I would eat it was definitely, uh, I got super into Reese's pieces. Oh, great. Which are, Love that. they're like super, as far as the hiking food goes, or even a food in general, I just think they're like overpowered. Like, yeah. A, they're, they're delicious. The best ratio of like candy to peanut butter. Um, yeah. you can put that satisfying crunch. They're actually like, I think for normal, like candy eating, not even really that many calories. Like I sure. think they're that bad for you. Right. They're basically vegetables. I love, I love Reese's. I think the peanut butter chocolate combo is so good for like yeah. any sort of like endurance type of sport, you know, any yeah. sort of like athletic. Oh yeah, I, for sure. I and love protein. A, yep. It's all, it's a great, great mix. Um, all right, let's just talk about let's just talk about gear real quick if you're cool sure. with that. Um Absolutely. so like how do you know how much your pack weighs when you start a trip like this? Um yes. Uh mine weighed around 15 pounds. That's, okay. So that's before Is that pretty common? water. Yep. I would say that's about I would say it's on the low end of average. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And uh and shoes. How many how many different pairs of shoes do you go through on a trip like this? I went through four pairs. Four pairs of shoes, all the same type, or do you switch up types and brands and stuff? I would have liked to use the same type, but my yeah. my brand, as shoe companies do, they like to change them every year. Yeah. And and the one that I buy, they changed and it the quality was very low. So oh, okay. It, like the one I bought was just it just like fell apart. Yeah. So I, I ended up going through it was three different types, all the same brand. I, I wear Hoka's as a brand. Yeah. Um so I started with one. I actually started with a road shoe. Okay. Um, generally, people uh, who are through hiking wear trail runners. Yep. Um, that's another common misconception. Conception is people think that you would wear boots. Right. But boots are very heavy. Um, right. To get blisters in them, so we all wear trail runners. I actually started in road shoes, and by the end, I switched back to those road shoes because I liked them so much. So you went road shoes, and you hit. You got a couple of trail pair in between, and then you went back to road shoes. Exactly. But all all Hoka all four times. All Hoka all four times. Nice. Nice. Um, how, what is that experience? Like, are you ordering them and getting them shipped to you? Are people sending them to you? Or are you buying them in, in towns? Are you sort of plotting that out? A thing that I didn't know that existed until I started through hiking was that you can get stuff shipped to the post office and just pick it up there. Like I thought yeah, you would need cool. a PO box. Yep. Um, so generally I would do that, but you do need to be careful because you can't order off say like Amazon. Yeah. Uh, because well, two reasons. One, Jeff Bezos is evil. And two, yeah. uh, they don't use the U.S. Postal Service. So they're not going to hold a package oh, because you're right. not giving them any money. Right. You know? So, uh, yeah. So generally, I would order like direct from like I would go to Hoka.com. And they gotcha. Use, yes. and, then, and then you ship it to Steamboat Springs or wherever the hell. Yes. And just no, grab generally, it Generally, you have to like use your right like general delivery, hold for CDT hiker, estimated time, this. And yeah. then you just go in. That's cool. That's yeah. interesting. I'm sure there are a lot of different like wrinkles and stuff like that, that you oh, are yeah. figuring Especially, out as you go. Yeah. 
Um, we go through a lot of like small towns. So for yep. example, we go to this place called uh, Pie Town. Uh, and this whole town is all of their roads are just dirt roads. There's probably about maybe 150 people who live there, if that. Um, and they have a post office and then three pie restaurants. And that's it. <laughs> and not wow. like restaurants, like pie yeah. places. Just like pie places. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Places to buy full pies or slices of pie. <laughs> exactly. What kind of pie um, did you get? Um, I got a peach cobbler nice. and something else I forget. That place was like, it was, so that's what I was going to say is like, it's pretty early in the trail. So it's been there were a lot of us. So the day I was there, there was probably about 40 CDT hikers, which is a lot. Holy cow. Um, and this place was just absolutely overrun. And it's like, there's only one person who works in the post office and everybody gets something to ship to Pie Town because they only have pie there and you're not going right. to do a full reason right. on pie, right. although you probably could. Um, so it's just like a lot of these places can't really handle the amount of people that are coming into it which right i mean you said 150 people live in the town if there are 40 hikers there you're upping the percentage by like 30 <laughs> percent yeah you're just exactly. like adding you're adding to the population of the so town it's like, like the 30%. poor postal woman like right. just you know three three weeks out of the year it just gets insane amount of packages that she needs to sort through and wow. you know people like ship stuff and then we'll get it off trail so now it's stuck there and now she needs to deal with that and so right um yeah we can kind of overrun towns in these small places you got any uh you have any plans coming up for the next one so it's a, there's a thing called the triple crown which is the three wow. large scenic trails which is the yep. pacific crest trail and continental divide and they say you either do one or you do three so i've done two okay you so okay so you want to do the third <laughs> is it is it the is it appalachian trail it is the appalachian trail nice. um as of right now i'm slightly burned out Sure. Uh, so I was pretty gung ho about triple crowning, like boom, 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 back to back. But I think I'm going to take a little break, and you know, hopefully, maybe in five years or so, I, I think I would do Try it. it. I, I would yeah. like. It always sounds so awesome, especially while you're on one of these long hikes, and you're, you know, you can only carry 15 pounds worth of stuff because you're going so far. Um, you're really eating ramen every day. It's like to to look at people who are car camping. Or to look at people who are just out for the weekend and they're swimming, right? Or they're just hanging out, or they've like brought a camp chair. They have all these like luxuries and they're just right. you know kind of enjoying themselves. Like I look at that and be like, wow, that could be fun, you know? Right. <laughs> like I love doing less... these long things, right. but like so now I'm maybe interested in like trying some shorter stuff and you know smell the roses a bit. Yeah, it's a little less daunting too, and it's nice to like switch it up, you know? Like yeah. you wanna. Cause then maybe it will like refresh in your, your, you know, your want to do the Appalachian trail or something. Exactly. Maybe do yeah. a little bit more on a bike. I think would be fun. Maybe a little bit more on a bike. Yeah. <laughs> I, do. I, I, I absolutely, to me, like bike packing uh, is a very different type of riding and it's one of the most like pure types of riding. I think, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, because, you know, similar to when you're out on trail, you wake up and all you have to do is be out there. And then all you're doing is you're eating calories to sustain yourself and you're breaking down camp in the morning, setting up camp at night just to continue your journey. And it's very free, yeah. you know, because right. there's nothing like I rode my bike earlier today and not to say that this was like a, you know, like something that I was like looming on my schedule, but it was something that I had to get home and do, you know, yes, right. and the same thing with like this morning when I like made, did work emails or whatever, or like polished up today. It's just a hill website. It's yeah. just like other shit that's going on, you know, and yep. like we all live busy lives and we all have so many other things going on than just like hiking or riding our bikes. And so like, you do want to be like a well-rounded person, but at the same time you want to like only focus on that. And so there's, right. you know, I think it's the nice, nice to have a balance. Everything should be balanced in a way you know yeah, like i agree can't just be i can't just be riding my bike every day you can't just be hiking every day as much as we might think we want to at times for right? sure as yeah. much as we sometimes do yes right yeah yeah um all right mark well thank you very much thank you for coming on the podcast this was a lot yeah. of fun i'd love i'd love to go bike packing together i'd love to just go uh backpacking together i'd love to hike together um and I've been looking at some Hoka trail shoes quite a Ooh, bit. So yeah. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to ask you some, I'm going to ask you some recommendations off pod if you're cool with that. Absolutely. Um, 
But yeah, thanks a lot, Mark. I think hey, this is super me. interesting. I'd love to. I'd love to have you back, and uh, maybe we'll, let's go bike packing together or something. I know you did try to go bike packing in Iceland. Yeah, uh, but that's a story. I might not. Time. Have, <laughs> might not have been the best experience of your yeah. life, but uh, yeah, that's all right too. Uh, all right, cool. Thanks a lot, dude. I appreciate yeah. it. And thank uh, you. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Big thanks to Mark for taking the time to do the show. Hopefully we can get him out on a bikepacking trip soon and make a follow-up episode. So, you know, it all comes full circle. Also, big thanks to my podcast partner in crime, BSP. You've seen him on previous episodes talking about pro cycling, but he does so much more than that. Uh, you know, he's cuts together the episodes. He mixes the audio for the show. So... Real life kudos to you, Brian. Thank you very much. And thank you all for watching or listening. If you don't subscribe, uh, please, if you don't subscribe already, please do. And give us a like or leave us a comment so we know what you thought about the episode. Check out those links below, as I mentioned in the intro, and see you on the next one. Decaf left, regular right. Decaf left, regular right. Very challenging work.